Hello, I am Jerry Fisaya Bambi, welcoming you to this episode of Inspire Africa, where we are continuing our series on the Sahel Women Empowerment and Demographic Dividend Sweat Project. On this episode, we discuss women's health at the heart of development in the Sahel. First, in Côte d'Ivoire, with Sweat's uh, Center of Excellence and Safe Spaces. Then, in Burkina Faso and Mali, where men in future husbands and husband groups are being sensitized on women's health issues. And we find out what the UNFPA, key initiator of the SWEAT project, is doing to help women in the Sahel benefit from uh, sexual and reproductive health services. This is Inspire Africa. Let's start off in Côte d'Ivoire, where the SWEAT's project, Center of Excellence and Safe Spaces, set up in parts of the country, are helping to educate and empower women and girls. Let's take a look. Here at the National Institute for Training of Health Workers, Trashville University Hospital in Abidjan, several students are taking part in health sciences pedagogy. Established in 2018, the institute is the largest sweat center of excellence in Côte d'Ivoire, training personnel in women's sexual and reproductive health services. We feel the quality is irreproachable because there it allows us to see on the field what we're doing and to be able to really improve the work that was done. Experts note that the quality of training will have a great impact on maternal, neonatal and child health. The Ivorian government say they are also helping to ensure the program meets its goals including that of reproductive health of girls. The master's degree in nursing and obstetrics has enabled us to strengthen the capacities of 396 community health workers who have helped to raise and improve the contraceptive rate among girls and who have also helped to raise awareness among more than 362,000 people with close to 9,000 new users of the new contraceptive methods. So we can say yes, the project has made a difference in the lives of young girls. As part of the project as safe places for young girls of the age of 8 and 24, there they are offered lessons on gender-based violence and taught skills that many of them have said will serve them throughout their lives. In Burkina Faso and Mali, attitudes to women and girls' sexual and reproductive health issues are changing. The women are the heart of this. Men in groups called the Future Husband Clubs and Husband Clubs are also being involved. Here is more. In the village of Tola, center east of Burkina Faso, a school for husbands is in place. Set up in October 2020, about 15 married men meet once a week for a course that lasts for four months. They are taught women's contraception, menstrual cycles and childbirth mechanisms topics that are often taboo in ultra-conservative societies. At the beginning, many were reluctant, but when they understood the benefits of the different themes, they finally accepted, and the old village population has now benefited from the change of behavior. I am proud of my position. I got reassured when I was told that there would be better communication within the family. I now take over some of the household chores when my wife has health problems. I am also committed to educating other men who beat their wives. I tell them to stop doing it. For authorities, the approach of involving men in the promotion of women's sexual and reproductive health is a big pragmatic step. It was important for men to be understanding and to know the importance of accompanying women in consultations. Letting women go for consultations is in the interest of the family. It allows the woman to adapt the contraceptive method in order to plan the birth and improve the health of the newborn. In neighboring Mali, the SWEAT project is also putting women's health at the heart of development. The Malian government and the SWEAT project constantly carry out joint initiatives. First of all, the setting up of a national program to combat excision. The program addresses not only harmful practices such as female genital mutilation, but also early marriages, sexual harassment, exploitation and sexual abuse. With these programs, SWED says the well-being and health of women and girls are being improved and promoted for the overall development of the society. If you are just joining us, you are watching Inspire Africa with me, Jerry Fisayo Bambi. Now, the West Africa Health Organization, WA, 
WHO is part of the big force putting women's health at the center of development in the Sahel region. To talk about its role with the SWEAT project, we have with us Professor Stanley Okolo, its Director General. A warm welcome to you. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Professor Okolo. Um, to begin with, your organization's access to the highest decision makers in the West African region is quite unique and it's quite huge. Um, given your convenient power, what are you doing to engage political powers for the issues of concerns in the SWEAT project? The West Africa Health Organization, WAHO, is an intergovernmental organization. It is the health institution of ECOWAS. And what we have done is to try and bring to the highest levels the issue of women's and girls' empowerment and also their reproductive health and rights. So we have developed a directive on women's health rights. We are at the moment also working within the Human Capacity Development Project of uh, ECOWAS Commission, which is not just the issue of uh, health alone, but as you know, human capacity development cuts across. We have also utilized some of these uh, convening power in terms of looking at advocacy at the highest levels. Indeed, and we see that the work that you, uh, your organization and partners are doing with the established regional centers of excellence for the training of nurses and midwives to, to meet uh, the health needs of the region is quite interesting. Uh, what is this endeavor all about in the first place, and what is the future? Now, you see, a lot of the training usually in, um, of uh, doctors, not just uh, nurses and midwives, but mainly nurses and midwives, a lot of the training tends to be clinical. So how do we move from clinical to service areas to service and development. And that's why we decided that it was necessary to establish, in the first instance, three specialty areas. So we are talking about something like health service uh, pedagogy. We are talking about health service development. We are talking about reproductive health. These are specialized areas where we've developed a master's degree program for nurses and midwives in our initial three centers of excellence in Cote d'Ivoire, in uh, Niger and in Mali. But we are also expanding this now. We are going to uh, three more countries to try and ensure that we are already training nurses that not only are midwives, that not only come out with the clinical knowledge to deliver care, but with the understanding and the aptitude to look at the regional issues in terms of reproductive health and rights of women and children. Professor Stanley Okolo, I'd like to thank you very much for sharing insights about your work and with the SWEAT project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, sexual and reproductive health and rights are an essential part of universal health coverage, and experts on the subject believe that countries moving towards that need to consider how that of girls and women are met. Joining us to talk about this and more is Argentina Matavel, the UNFPA Regional Director for West and Central Africa. It's so good to have you with us, uh, Ms. Matavel. The UNFPA's current strategic plan, 2018 to 2021, which of course is ending this year in December, and the newly adopted 2022 to 2025 plan focuses on sexual and reproductive health and rights. Uh, why is this an essential element of development? That's an interesting question, actually, because they're an enabler to the participation of a woman or a girl in society's life, also in her ability to develop. If a young girl of 14 or 15 gets pregnant, and well, she did not plan for it, which happens all the time. The first thing that happens to her is that she stops going to school. But even for a grown woman, a woman of 15 to 24, which is the majority of the population in West and Central uh, Africa region, they, that's when they're starting to go to the job market uh, soon after university or high school. That's a nightmare for any woman because she immediately gets afraid of being passed on for promotion, uh, get, gets afraid for that she has not made an impression on her supervisors. It is essential if we want really we're serious about empowerment of women and the overall development because it's half or more than half of the population, uh, sexual and reproductive health are an enabler to, to women's development and in consequence to society's development. 
Interesting. And uh, the first months of the COVID-19 pandemic highlighted and aggravated some of, the, some of these concerns and also long-standing inequities in healthcare availability and access. What is the UNFPA doing in the SIL to help women to continue to benefit from health care, including sexual and reproductive health services? What happened is that governments naturally were dealing with a new event, a new pandemic, a new disease, and nobody knew what to do. So UNFPA naturally started working with governments, advocating, impressing upon them that the consequences of stopping sexual and reproductive health services, specifically emergency obstetric care and, uh, and family planning and gender-based violence services would be disastrous long after, during and long after the pandemic. So one of the first things we did was the advocacy work. And in parallel, we started developing guidelines for health workers to be uh, confident to provide a service, knowing that they, they were protected and they would not uh, be infected. Family planning, for instance, with the services that were disrupted, it is 68% of the, of the pregnancies that happened during the pandemic were unwanted or unplanned because naturally if a woman is on a pill or on an injection and she has no way of accessing the next month's pills or the next uh, injection then she falls pregnant right in fact it's a multiplier effect anytime services for family planning or emergency obstetric and newborn care are disrupted and uh, one of the things that the ongoing hashtag Stronger Together campaign by the SWED initiative relies on essentially is uh, social and behavioral change communication, SBCC. Why is this so critical to improving women and girls' access to health? For a long time, we had development programs that did not touch onto the very foundational uh, determinant of a behavior. So even if you have the facility close to the people, you have the family planning, the contraception there, the, ser the services, unless the traditions and beliefs that tell the woman that she's not supposed to step out of the house when she's pregnant, for instance, or that she's not supposed to use a modern contraception, unless we target those behaviors and those beliefs, you will not get anywhere. That's why social and behavioral change communication is important because we handle and deal with and study and understand the roots of what makes people choose to do or not to do something. Argentina Matavel, Regional Director for UNFPA West and Central Africa. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us on your show. Stay with us here on Inspire Africa. We've got more for you also on our website, africannews.com. I am Jerry Fisaya Bambi, and I am leaving you with an excerpt from a single produced as part of the Stronger Together campaign of the Sweat Project, a song by 11 artists from the Sahel to raise public awareness on the fight against violence against women and girls during the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> Nous sommes sortis plus fort. Aujourd'hui, l'espoir est